Hello, eighth graders. What this video is for is to show you how you can make a distance versus time chart. So this is using Google Sheets to make a chart and then how you can then use that chart to make a graph. So I'm gonna go over this on how to do this. So when you go to your Google Drive, I'll just kind of walk you through that. You go to Google Drive. Um, from your drive, you can click New. Click New and then Google Sheets. Google Sheets, and just go on ahead and open up a brand new Google Sheets document, and I'm gonna title this one Motion Data. So you might wanna make this document before you start your lab, that way you have somewhere to record all of that data, okay? And so for this experiment, we are gonna run a couple trials. So I'm gonna make a column for trials, a column for the distance, a column for the time. And for the distance, I'm gonna put my units. So I'm gonna work in centimeters. For time, I'm gonna work in seconds. And then finally, we're gonna calculate the speed. And when you're reading lesson one, you're gonna learn that speed is dividing distance by time. So I'm just gonna take my distance measurement and divide it by my time units. So distance, centimeters, divided by time. That's gonna be my units. And then for this experiment, we're gonna use, we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five trials, five trials. So now that I've kind of created the start of my table right here, I need to record distance and time and calculate for speed. So I'm gonna pretend for this example, I'm gonna describe one to you, but it's gonna depend on your experiment at home. I'm going to pretend that I'm just rolling a marble and the marble will always roll 100 centimeters. I'm going to assume that my marble is starting at the same place and ending at the same place every time. So depending on your experiment, you might have the same number five times. You might not if your object is not moving the same distance. Then I recorded myself with a timer for how long it took my marble to travel. I took a measurement to measure how long it took my marble to travel. So I might be on something like this. I'll show you guys an example. Maybe I'm doing an experiment like this at home. I have a marble and a ramp and I'm just starting it and letting it roll down the ramp. And I'm recording the time it takes to get there right there. Maybe that's what I'm doing at home. Okay. So I'm gonna go back to my motion data and let's say to roll 100 centimeters, it took me 9.343 seconds the first time. 9.56. I'm making these numbers up. This is not how I want you to do it. I want you to actually measure the time with your stopwatch. And so I'm going to pretend for the sake of this that this is the data that I got. This is the data that I got. Let me blow these numbers up so we can see them now for all their glory. So the last thing we need to do here is figure out our speed at each one of these. What is our average speed for this trial? What is our average speed for this trial? What is our average speed for this trial and this trial and this trial? So the way you're gonna do this is um, you just need to divide this number by this number. You need to divide distance divided by time. Distance divided by time is what speed equals, speed equals. And you'll read that in lesson one in the book. So speed equals distance divided by time. I'm gonna do that here. I'm gonna say equals. And if I start equals, it's gonna create a function for me where I can put anything in here. And all I need to do now is click this box. Now it's gonna take this number and I wanna divide it by this number. So what I've done here is I've created a function where speed is equal to the distance, this number, divided by this number. And when I hit enter, it will give me my speed. So my marble traveled 10.6 centimeters per second. 
that's how fast it went here. And we can reduce these numbers here. I'm gonna click this to decrease the decimal places. I wanna have, I'm sorry, I'm gonna just get one decimal place here. And now you have two options. You can do that each time here. This equals B4 divided by, this is my row or my column, C4 or this number right here. And I get a similar number. I click here to remove those excess decimal places. And then what I will do, I'm gonna highlight both of these. And because I'm gonna use the same math for this number, this number, and this number, I'm always gonna be dividing this by this for speed. What you can do, what's really cool about sheets, is you can just click and drag. Click and drag, and now it will run the math for each one of these rows. This is taking this number and dividing it by this. This is taking this number and dividing it by this. This is taking this number and dividing it by this. So now we have our table. We have our table. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just make a quick graph. So now that you have your table, you're gonna make a graph and here's how you do it. We want to compare distance by time, so highlight those two columns. Highlight both the columns, one for distance and one for time. When we do this and we run the graph, what will happen is the first thing we highlight will be our X and this will be our Y, you're gonna see that. So highlight those two. And then we're gonna use data. No, I'm sorry, insert, insert, chart, insert, chart. Insert chart. And you can see here, it has created for me a chart. There's a lot of different chart options right here. We can change the different ones. You can go line graphs, column graphs, scatter plots, maps, all sorts of stuff. For today, let's go ahead and do a scatter plot. So I want everyone to select scatter plot. After you have selected scatter plot, you have your data. This is your chart. And you're welcome to kind of play with this chart to make it look cleaner and cleaner, but this is the chart you're gonna turn into me. So if I click on my data, I click on the little points here, it's gonna give me some options. I can change the color of my little uh, circles there. I can also change the point size to make it a little bigger to see. And I want everyone to do this is to add the trend line. So add a trend line to yours and what it does is it kind of connects the dots for you to show you how they line up. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there. We'll go over more with the graphs and charts in future labs. Once you have that, you can take a screenshot of your data and a screenshot of your graph and turn both of those into Seesaw.